Hey team, hope you're doing well. This is a, compila a compilation of, a, of numerous videos that I've created for athletes that are trying to run under the four hour marathon. And what I want to you to keep in mind as you're watching through these various videos that I made is the importance of training with leverage, okay? It's not about how much volume you're putting in, it's about what is the quality of the training that you're actually conducting. Are you running a high volume, a, a high amount of volume to aerobically, if that's the case, you're just gonna be a very strong, long, slow distance runner. If you're trying to break the four hour marathon, the concepts and the tactics and strategies that you'll see within these videos will definitely walk you through the steps and to give you the indication of some of the things that maybe you're doing incorrectly that you need to adjust. It might be you're doing your long runs too slow every weekend, it might be too low of a percentage of your weekly volume is being spent running too easily and you need to start really focusing on getting that that uh, 541 kilometer pace or 909 mile pace to feel easier for you and I guarantee you if you watch this video from start to finish and really just to, to really take notes of what I'm discussing in these videos that I've made I guarantee you your chances of breaking the four-hour marathon are going to skyrocket. Okay, I'm, I'm very confident in the fact that all of you that are trying to break the four-hour marathon have the capability to do it. You have the motivation, you have the drive. It's just now implementing the tactics and strategies that you're going to be learning through, through this little mini course um, to really help you get to the next level and help you get that 359.59 you're looking for. If after watching these videos, you really want to learn the in-depth and, and real specifics of breaking the four-hour marathon, I highly recommend going to RunDreamAchieve.com. Check out the sub-four-hour marathon pace course that I created. Uh, that goes into even more specifics than what this particular mini course uh, will provide for you. So I wish you the very best in your, your attempt in pursuit of breaking this four-hour marathon, and I hope the tactics and strategies that you're learning, you'll be learning throughout these throughout these videos that I've made, will help you get across the finish line in a new personal best in that 3:59.59 or faster time. So, enjoy these videos. I wish you the very best in your training, and uh, enjoy it. Uh, I wanted to make a new video on how to run a sub four marathon because this is a topic that that continually comes up. Um, a lot of athletes have reached out to me in regards to specific questions on like. Uh, what what do I need to do in order to make that next big jump in, in my training? I'm, I'm I'm at 420 and I need to get and I'm dreaming about 359. So uh, the first thing I got to tell you guys is definitely a sub four hour marathon. In my opinion, uh, is the point where you really start to distance yourself from the pack. I mean, a sub four hour marathon definitely takes uh, a, a high level of talent. Um, there are a lot of athletes out there that are trying to break the sub four hour marathon and still miss the the barrier. They they have all the talent, they have all the capability, but there are a lot of leaks in their training that they need to correct in order to start getting the results that they're looking for. So as you know, a sub four hour marathon comes out to nine minutes and nine seconds per mile for 26.2 miles, or five minutes and 41 seconds per kilometer for 42.2 kilometers. So it's not about, like I said in other videos, it's not about you being able to sustain pace for 15 miles of the race or 32 kilometers of the race. It's where you're at at the finish line. So uh, the, the key thing in, in regards to making these big jumps in the marathon distance, and, and I, I understand too how difficult it is because I was, I was a marathoner myself. Um, I, I ran and competed in marathons from 2002 all the way up to 2013. My last marathon I actually competed in was, um, I ran 232.55 at the um, 2013 uh, California International Marathon. I hold a personal best of two hours, 19 minutes and 35 seconds. Uh, so I do, and I've broken uh, the sub three hour marathon about 15 times, and I know how difficult even breaking sub four is. Consistent action is definitely the key in regards to you making those big leaps in, in your training and in your preparation as you lead into your marathon. And you have to start thinking outside the box and start doing things differently. I have a sub four hour marathon uh, course that I've created on RunDreamAchieve.com that may be of interest to you. Uh, obviously there's a lot of free content on RunDreamAchieve.com as well as the videos here that you can learn from. But what I've really tried to do in regards to the courses and the training programs is really break down what you need to be doing on a daily, weekly, monthly basis so that all the guesswork of trying to break a four hour marathon 
uh, is taken away from you and, and you know and you have that that um, that knowledge of knowing what you need to be doing each week as to become a sub four hour marathon runner be thinking about okay how can I get this pace how can I get nine minutes and nine seconds or five minutes and 41 seconds per kilometer to feel more moderate rather than so taxing and so fatiguing on on me when I'm racing I can sustain this pace for a certain amount of time but as, as the the race progresses I have a hard time sustaining that pace the key thing is not just only training at that pace so training at goal marathon race pace but we always talk about um, training at the anaerobic threshold where you right around where you race at but also training at your vo2 max and that's the point where you're building up so much lactic acid that your body cannot clear it that's the reason why we can only spend a few seconds to a few minutes running at those intensities and that goes for all of us it doesn't matter if you're a 219 marathoner such as myself or you are uh, you've run 425 and you're trying to get to 359 the same at physiological adaptations occur and that you have to make sure that you're stressing the anaerobic systems of the body. You're, you're training at speeds that you can only withstand and you can only sustain for a certain, a few seconds to a few minutes. Like those, um, the track workouts, uh, any type of uh, one mile repetitions, two mile repetitions, uh, repeat 800s, repeat 600s, all these, these intervals that we, we focus on, that will make a sub four hour marathon pace feel more in control you're, you're, it's not so taxing on the body. Now granted, it doesn't matter even if you've trained very at very high anaerobic levels, it's obviously going to hurt in the latter stages of the marathon. So the mental piece of your preparation is really key. Um, visualization and mental training is a key piece of your preparation. You need to start focusing on mental training as well uh, to break this up for our marathon. The, like I said, the best athletes are not always the hardest working athletes. They're the smartest athletes, the smartest working athletes, the athletes that are not so caught up in how much mileage I'm running or how many kilometers a week I'm running. They're focused on what I want to use leverage. Start working smarter rather than harder. I don't need to necessarily have to run more mileage to get under a sub four hour marathon, but I do need to zero in on what are the exact workouts that I need to be doing. And some of those keys is, is one, um, training longer durations at your tempo runs, getting that tempo run out from early on in your training uh, block, it might be two or three miles, and that might be very difficult, and naturally it is very difficult as, you, as you're building into fitness. And getting that tempo run out to say like 10 miles, you want to f focus on getting that duration, the, the tempo runs at, at a longer uh, span of time. Uh, where you, you're holding your heart rate at around 88 to 92 percent of your maximum heart rate uh, and, and you're, you're, you've spent a long time training at, at paces with at your anaerobic threshold. That really is key. That's one of the biggest ways, biggest reasons why I was able to run as fast as I did for the marathon. Uh, I was extending the amount of time I was running at my anaerobic threshold in my long run or in my tempo runs. Longer long runs is sometimes uh, uh, something you need to adjust to break a sub 4 hour marathon. Maybe you're going uh, 14 miles for your long run and you need to get it out to around 20 miles. You need to experience that time on your feet and you need to stress your body not only anaerobically but also aerobically. Uh, it, it's still important to run long and slow. There is a place for that. Uh, but you also need to not only run longer runs, longer long runs, but you also need to run faster long runs. And this is a new philosophy because a lot of athletes, uh, myself included, when I first started getting into marathoning, I was more focused on, okay, so I need to run, I want to get my long run out to like 22 to 23 miles in length. But it was it was a generally an, an easy long run. It wasn't, it was making me very efficient at burning fat, but I wasn't training at a high enough intensity. And that's why I think a big uh, part a, a, a big advantage that you have if you start using a heart rate monitor uh, you'll be able to focus on your heart rate so you're focusing on what heart rate you need to be at for the duration of your your long run rather than worrying about the splits and I've always I've always enjoyed heart rate monitor training for my own marathoning preparation because it keeps me at that heart rate zone that I need to be at and as you get fitter your your pace is going to get faster 
and your heart's not going to have to work as hard. So I think to break a sub four hour marathon, heart rate monitor training, if you haven't yet in, in, implemented that into your training, invest in a heart rate monitor. I have a few uh, recommendations below this video if you want to check it out. Um, those are, are there for you as well. So um, I think too, a big reason why a lot of athletes don't break this particular barrier is, is again, they're, they have, it's not for reasons that they, they don't have the, the capability. Uh, a lot of times athletes go out far too fast in the early stages of the marathon, so you really need to pace yourself. Uh, and, and I've always said this, the, the, no one wins a marathon in the first 20 miles. It's really in that last 10K. What are you able to do? Are you able to sustain the pace? A lot of times athletes think that they're speeding up in the latter stages of the, of the marathon, but really they're just sustaining the pace. And a lot of athletes that go out far too fast in the early stages of the marathon fall apart in the last uh, last latter parts of the race. Uh, another thing in order to, in, in terms of how to run a sub four marathon, is you need to pay close attention to your hydration. A big reason why I, I made the mistakes in my own career doing this is I would just take a few sips of uh, uh, Dixie cups that that the volunteers were handing out in the races, and I was not drinking. I would just you know take a sip and throw it throw it away. I was so focused on okay, I don't want to slow down because uh, it, it's going to cost me. No, sometimes you may even need to walk briefly, only for a few seconds, but stop, drink, take a few a couple of those Dixie cups, and ingest the entire volume of the cup. Don't just sip on the on on it, those cups and then throw them away. Your body needs that hydration and you need to also focus on ingesting more calories in the race. This might be uh, uh, a few of those gel packets. Put, put a, a gel packet in each side of your uh, shorts prior to the start of the race and take that last gel that's usually around 17 or 18 miles into the, into the marathon that a lot of athletes don't take. You need those extra calories, they'll, they'll go to your bloodstream immediately. Um, and give you those additional calories that you need. Now, I'm a big believer in, um, if you really want to break a sub four hour marathon 2020, start practicing hydration, taking in more fluids in your long runs, in training first. Make sure you're making those mistakes. Find out how much um, how much fluid your body, your, your stomach can take prior to going into a marathon and, and experience that. Um, and again, a lot, of, a lot of reasons why a lot of athletes fail at breaking the sub four hour marathon is they're, one, they haven't trained at paces fast enough to make that sub four hour marathon pace feel more sustainable. They, they have probably ran too many miles each week too slow, and they just need to start spending, like again, correcting those leaks in your trainings though, so that you're, you, you can get to a point where marathon race pace feels more control um, and that you can sustain that for the entire duration of the race. That's going to come about by doing those that once per week VO2 max workout, um, either one mile repeats uh, or two mile repeats with, with very short rest in between. So just to give you an idea of the, the types of intensities you want to be thinking about is if it's um, easy pace that I focus on uh, is anywhere from 130 to 150 beats per minute. And again, this is going to depend on the age of the athlete as well. Uh, anywhere from 151 to 160 is moderate. Uh, anywhere from 160 to uh, 165 to 172 is right around uh, anaerobic threshold for a lot of athletes, especially like when I was coming up, it, I would really focus on uh, running at around 170 to 173 beats per minute. But that's when I was in my early 30s. I'm 44 now, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus on running that hard. So again, it's going to come down to how old you are and, and the age of the athlete. Um, VO2 max is going to be anywhere from 175 beats or higher. So that's, again, that's coming closer to 95 to 100% of your maximum heart rate. Um, but in terms of workouts, easy pace can be anywhere from 10, 10, 10 to 11, 10 per mile uh, for you. Threshold pace is going to be somewhere around 832 mile pace. Uh, if you're doing intervals, say um, uh, three times three miles on the on the roads you want to be running those around 750 per per mile pace uh, if you're doing one mile repetitions you want to focus on again running much much faster than goal race pace so your goal race pace is 909 per mile you want me to you want to get to a point where you are you're able to do uh, five to six one mile repetitions in around seven 
16 to 718 per rep. And again, it's going to be low 1440s for the for each two mile if you're doing three two mile repetitions on the track. So in terms of how to run a sub four marathon, you need to be thinking about one, focusing on nutrition, focusing on visualization, mental training, uh, what are the best athletes doing, um, training at paces that are much, much faster than sub four hour marathon race pace so that, that again, you can sustain race pace longer, you've experienced what it feels like to be running at closer to your 3K to 10K race pace, uh, and doing this over a long period of time. A sub four hour marathon will not fall in your lap, so you have to be patient with yourself. You have to know and have that confidence that I'm, an ex I'm trying to do something that so many runners around the world want to do and miss. So you have to think outside the box. You have to invest in yourself, um, focus and study what the best runners are doing. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. If you have any questions and you need uh, further clarification on, on something that I talked about in this video, leave me a comment below. Uh, if you're brand new to the channel, click that subscribe button, hit that bell icon. So when I make new videos, you'll be notified. Even if you are, you're not brand new and you're a regular viewer and you haven't subscribed yet, definitely hit that. Um, give me a like if you can, I appreciate it. It helps the, the channel grow. And again, I, I do the best I can to answer all the questions that you guys have. Um, I know a sub four hour marathon is a very respectable time. Uh, and my hat's off to you guys that are trying to go after this. I want to see you do it. Um, and let me know below if you're, if you're uh, anywhere from uh, four hours or above for the marathon and what you've been doing in the past um, and what's caused you not to break this barrier. How close are you? I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing that from you guys because I really want to uh, kind of dig in more to find out what is what is the leak in your training and how can we correct that to get you guys the best results you guys that you guys are looking for is four months amount of time is proper amount of time in order to break this barrier I believe it is I think the longer you train for a marathon the better but I also know that you have to be uh, you have to have a strategic plan in place if you're gonna run fast over the marathon distance you can't just guess what workouts you need to be doing on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. It's very, it's much more effective if you know exactly the types of workouts you need to be doing in order to effectively run a marathon, you know, this fast. A uh, sub four hour marathon comes out to nine minutes and nine seconds per mile or five minutes and 41 seconds per kilometer. And the biggest mistake I see a lot of runners making is they're running too many of their weekly miles or kilometers too slow. And, a, and, and they're also running those miles or kilometers too fast on their easy days. So to break a sub five, sub four hour marathon, you have to be focused on looking at the percentage of your weekly volume that you're training below that pace, but also how fast are you running on your easy days? Are you allowing enough time for your body to recover from the hard training that you're doing? Um, marathon success comes from is going to come down to your tenacity, your willingness to correct the flaws that you've had in the past in your training. You know, for me personally, one of the biggest mistakes I was making was I was running uh, long runs far too slow. Um, it wasn't until 2007 when I was with the Army World Class Athlete Program that I started making huge adjustments in how I set up my long runs. Um, you know, I, I didn't just immediately uh, run the, f the first few weeks into a 16 week buildup, uh, start running fast long runs. No, I spent about four weeks running nice, easy, relaxed aerobic running first so that I built the foundation. I built that aerobic base first. And then I started training specific training where I was running at faster paces during my long runs, usually anywhere from around 30% uh, to around 60% of my long run was spent running at around 160 beats per minute, uh, which for me, when I ran Prior to running 219.35 for the marathon, that was running around 85 to 87% of my maximum heart rate. So this is aggressive running. Uh, for the athletes that are trying to run, uh, you know, a sub that are seeking a sub four hour marathon training plan uh, over 16 weeks, uh, I think the first thing you need to do is spend preferably about four weeks of aerobic running where you're just building that foundational, uh, you know, that, that foundational basis first. You're building your mileage, you're, you're building your fitness, your general fitness, and then start a 16 week block of training. So really you're training uh, about, you know, about five months for, for your marathon. That is plenty of time to break a sub five or sub four hour marathon. But you have to do it smart. You have to 
go beyond thinking that higher mileage is going to guarantee you a sub four hour marathon because it's not. There are athletes out there running a hundred miles a week that are still not breaking four hours. And what I would do if I was training them and I was, I would be looking at what percentage of their weekly volume are they, are they actually training, you know, much faster than 909 mile pace or much faster than 541 kilometer pace. Because again, you have to get race pace to feel more manageable. You don't want to be stressed out the first 10 miles of a marathon and, and feeling like you're going into oxygen debt. You're, it's normal to feel that way in the last five kilometers of a marathon, but you definitely do not want to feel that way in the first, you know, eight to 10 miles of a marathon. So I would, I would look at their training and say, Hey, I see here that you're, you're putting in a hundred miles a week, but you're only doing about five to 10% of your weekly volume running at, at a minimum 909 mile pace. So if you're running too much volume at, at too slow, of a, a too aerobic uh, effort, it's going to be very hard to be able to sustain 909 mile pace and to break a sub five, four hour marathon. So there, there has to be an increase in the, uh, the percentage of the weekly volume you're training at paces that are at, at race pace, but far below race pace. That's why I always, you know, I always emphasize every one of my running uh, courses, training plans, once per week, we do a VO2 max workout where we're working on speed development. We're doing longer tempo runs. So we're training for longer periods of time at the anaerobic threshold. Your anaerobic threshold is the point where you start to build lactic acid buildup in your, in your body when you're racing or when you're running at faster paces. Uh, the reason why we can run for longer periods of time at our anaerobic threshold is because it's not so anaerobic like a VO2 max workout where you know you, we can't clear that lactic acid faster than it's building up. It's still at a higher level, but and it's not comfortable for sure, but you can sustain your tempo pace, your anaerobic threshold effort for longer periods of time for several minutes to um, you know, over an hour, if need be, for for training for a marathon. Uh, you know, I was recently asked too, uh, what's what's the proper distance really for a tempo run for for um, an athlete in their you know for an older athlete, like a masters level athlete. And again, everybody's different. Um, some I've seen athletes break the sub four hour marathon, uh, running six to seven mile tempo runs, uh, but they were doing again. They were focusing on doing mile repeats in the low sevens. Uh, seven minute mile pace per rep. Um, so again, running t about two minutes faster than goal race pace, which was sub four hour marathon pace. Um, they were doing uh, longer long runs, but at a faster pace, uh, which is key. You definitely want to always alternate doing one long, faster, very pace long run, uh, followed the next weekend by an easy relaxed long run so that you you start again you don't just run long slow and easy every single weekend uh, again you're going to build a huge amount of endurance uh, it's going to definitely help you to break a sub four hour marathon doing long slow easy long runs but just don't do it every single weekend and when i talk about very paced long runs I'm, what i'm what i'm talking about is uh for an example prior to breaking uh 220 for the marathon um you know for me i, I knew i had to sustain for me, my goal of breaking two hours and 22 minutes, I knew I had to sustain five minutes and 25 seconds per mile. So I would do like a two mile warm up, uh, go into 10 miles at 160 beats per minute. When, when I was 100% fit, I would be running anywhere from the 520s to 550s per mile pace for that 10 to 12 mile segment. And then I would go, after that was complete, I would go back into a two mile jog and then run, you know, three miles at around 515 mile pace, extremely tough, very hard to do. And I was doing this at 6,000 feet in Colorado Springs. Um, I also did this type of uh, uh, training as well when I was in, at sea level, uh, when I was stationed at Fort Campbell in Kentucky. So you, you have to do these types of uh, varied pace long runs if you're gonna get that race pace to feel easier. Again, the reason why is because you're running for longer periods of time at a higher percentage of your maximum heart rate, it's going to help improve your body's lactate tolerance, which is absolutely essential. The best middle to long distance runners make it look easy for a reason. They are spending a higher percentage of their weekly volume training at or below their goal race pace. So for you, you know, a sub four hour marathon training plan over 16 weeks, it needs to focus on getting that race pace to feel more in control and less demanding on the athlete. 
This is the philosophy I've been taught over the, over 30 years of, of experience in this sport from some of the world's top distance running coaches, uh, from athletes that have broken 210 for the marathon. Um, I've been surrounded by some phenomenal people over the, over the years, and so I'm sharing these philosophies so that I get the athletes that I coach to use leverage. Leverage simply means doing more with less. And so it's very difficult for most of us because we're very highly driven, demand, you know, demanding athletes, d focused and driven. It's very easy for us to back off and to, and to get this concept, uh, get this idea of, of training smarter rather than harder. We already know how to train hard, but the hardest working athletes don't always get the results. The athletes that are working smarter uh, usually do. And it doesn't, when I mean training smarter, it doesn't necessarily mean doing higher mileage. Yes, you still have to put in volume, but you have to look at your weekly training and say, what percentage of, of my weekly volume am I actually training at the pace that I'm trying to race at? And if that percentage is too low, then you know now you need to start adjusting that and get it to a point where you're closer to around 40 to 45% of your weekly volume. That's not easy to do. Um, but again, the best middle to long distance runners, most of the best middle to long distance runners are spending around 40% of their weekly mileage training at paces that are at or very far below goal race pace. That is the way you do this. You have to also focus on doing all the other fundamentals correctly. You have to focus on a proper taper. Don't start dropping volume or intensity too far out from your marathon. A big mistake athletes make is they start dropping volume and intensity too far out. They go into the races feeling tired and then wondering, why do I feel tired if I have tapered down? A lot of times it's because you started dropping your intensity and your volume too soon rather than waiting to around 10 days out from your main race. So in the past, if that hasn't worked, start considering for future reference now, starting now, Consider a 10-day taper. You know, I teach this in the running courses. Um, I also coach online. Uh, so if you want to check that out, there's resources below these videos uh, to check out the month-to-month -month training uh, if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me. Uh, but I believe that uh, if you follow these fundamentals, you think you think about the things I'm talking about in these videos, uh, you will get to a point where you are able to sustain that sub-four-hour marathon pace throughout the entire race, and 16 weeks is plenty of time to prepare for a marathon. Again, focus on four weeks of easy running. You know, don't do any types of tempo runs, don't do any type of speed workouts, and then start into a 16-week block of training. So that's five months to prepare for your marathon. If you do that properly, you focus on running a negative split in your race. That means don't, don't go out any faster than um, don't go any faster than around 159, 158 to 159 the first half marathon in, in your sub four hour marathon attempt. Um, if you go out in 202, you know, even if you go out in 202 and you come back stronger and you run, you know, a, a 157, that's a 359 right there. So it's better to do run a negative split than to uh, run a positive split. And there are athletes out there that still go out and run really aggressive the first half, come back a little bit slower and still set a personal best. You know, when I ran 219.35, I went out in 107.09 the first half and came back with a 112.26. So it can be done, but it's much smarter to be a little bit more conservative in the early stages of your race and then really attack in the second half, especially in the last 10K. Train the body to burn fat at race pace and conserve what you have less of, which is carbohydrate glycogen. You want to call upon those glycogen stores in the last 10 kilometers of your race. You do not want to run out of glycogen in the race and you don't want to go out too fast in your marathon and pay for it in the early state in the later stages of your race. It's very painful. I've been there myself. I had to back off and, and readjust and, and know and study what I was doing wrong as well, which was again, going out way too fast the first half and then paying for it in the second half. So yeah, you do have to be, um, it's better to be a little conservative and then really attack in the second half and run a negative split. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. Uh, hit the bell icon so when I make new videos, you'll be notified of it. If there's anything else I can help you out with, 
feel free to leave me a comment below if you have any other questions or concerns. And there again, if you want to work with me online, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, month to month, uh, check out the running private running community. If, if we also have running courses and training plans as well here at RunDreamAchieve.com that are available to you as well to help take your running to the next level. And I look forward to hearing from you. So definitely let me know how your training is going in the comment section. And I look forward to talking with you in the next video. Key, there's two key things you need to do. Number one, you need to change up the way you're conducting that long run. So you cannot run easy every single weekend and expect to hold that pace for 26.2 miles, especially if it's if the pace you're running at is between like 950 to 1030 mile pace. Running at that pace is definitely going to help you burn calories. It's definitely going to strengthen your body, help you build more endurance. But when it comes to racing a marathon, that's a whole whole different uh, strategy that that you need to you know you need to implement you need to start working on so basically what I want to discuss just in this video is as what I did to to get to a point where I ran from two hours and 43 minutes to under two hours and 20 minutes for the marathon and that's a huge amount of time it's about 21 minutes uh, a 21 minute drop in time so the key thing that I was that I had to do first was to one definitely change up how I was thinking. Um, I was focusing too many, too many weekends running far too slow for my long runs. I would, for me, I was doing uh, anywhere from 20 to 22 miles in length for my long run, but it was at like 6:30 to 7 minute mile pace. So granted, that's a very good good pace, quality pace, but my goal was to break two hours and 22 minutes. So that's five hour, five minutes and 25 seconds per mile. So I had to do something totally different. Um, and one of the key things that I that I did do that I want to share with you that will definitely help you get under four hours is I started varying the paces of my long run. It wasn't just, you know, run running 16 to 22, 24 miles easy the whole way. Um, there is certainly a place for that. Uh, you got you cannot run hard every single weekend and expect to get uh, a return on your investment. But you do have to run very hard and then give your body time to recover from that uh, from that hard effort. So, what I would do is I would like I would start breaking up my long runs in like segments. So, say it was like a 20 mile run, I would do like the first five miles at uh, an easy easy pace. So, what we did was we we started. Uh, I've been using heart rate monitor training, uh, heart rate monitors since I was in college. Jack Hazen, who's the uh, He's been at Malone University, my alma mater, for the past 52 years. He definitely, he, he got me started on it. Uh, Jack's been coaching for years at, at the elite level uh, and was the 2012 Olympic USA track and field team assistant coach. So granted, somebody with that, uh, with that kind of background, you if, if you ignore that, um, you're doing yourself a disservice. So, <laughs> uh, so that's... So I started, I've been doing basically following Jack's uh, training philosophy with heart rate monitor training since I was in college. So in regards to the long run, I would do, like I was saying, I would break it, break it up in, into segments. So if it was a 20 mile run, the first five miles would be at like 140 heart rate. Uh, so that's recovery pace between 130 and 150 is nice and relaxed pace. And then five miles at 160 heart rate. So when I was very, very fit, uh, that would be anywhere from 520 mile pace to 550 mile pace. So it was very, very high quality miles. And then I would go five miles easy again, and then like three miles at 160, drop a mile at sub five minute mile pace, and then run the last mile at just a jog pace. Um, other examples would be, um, say if you're if you're wanting, in my, my opinion here, this is based on my background, how this can help you break a four hour marathon is it, it's sort of like, it's sort of like a, a far lick run. You know how far licks you have, you can do like 30 minutes of one minute hard, one minute easy, one minute hard, one minute easy. You're varying up your paces. It's not just, you know, and those hard paces are extremely hard. They're run at way faster paces than your goal marathon race pace. So that's kind of like what you want to do with your long run. Um, like I said, don't run easy. Don't just run easy every single weekend. Your long run, and this is my personal opinion, should be your hardest workout that you do. It's the hardest workout I do by far. Um, it didn't used to be that way, but when I started, uh, you know, I mentioned in 
on Run Dream Achieve that I was coached for three years by Lisa Rainsberger. Lisa won the 1985 Boston Marathon champ. She's the champ. She won the, the, the race. She's won Chicago twice, uh, numerous uh, other marathons around the world. But what we would do is we would vary up the, the, the paces of our long runs. And it was most of it was heart, based on heart rate training. So running at 160 heart rate during your long runs is like running at anywhere from 85 to 88 percent of your max heart rate. So this is quality, uh, very high quality pace uh, per mile pace that you're you're running at. So that's the key. You want to get to not, you got want to get to a point where you're not just running uh, just easy miles for a long period of time. There's definitely a purpose for that. There's definitely a good. You definitely want to do that. Uh, not definitely not saying not to, but you just don't want to do it every single weekend if you want to break a four-hour marathon. Um, if you're at four hours and 59 minutes and you want to drop all the way down, drop an hour to get to three hours and 59 minutes, you have to not only change up your the way you're training, but you have to train train up how you're thinking. The the mind is very very powerful. Um, you have to visualize yourself doing that. Um, and I and I say it time and time again on on the site. You actually have to you have to see that reality that what you want has already become a reality in your life. So uh, for me personally, I was obviously doing the hard work. Uh, I wanted to break a two-hour and twenty-two-minute marathon. So it, it's it's really no different than breaking a four-hour marathon. It's just the paces are the paces are, are different. That's it. It's just going to be just as difficult for you to break a four-hour marathon as it was for me to break a two-hour and 20-minute marathon. It's the same type of training, but it's the same fundamentals that if you follow the, the fundamentals, regardless if you're a total beginner or you're an elite athlete, it works. So, if, if like I said, if, if you change up how you're doing your long run, um, like an example, I'll give you an example. Try doing a 16-mile run, okay? Don't do a 16 mile, don't do this workout unless you build up a base and you have uh, very, very good fitness. Do not try this workout, and like I said, don't try this workout unless you're very fit, but do like a 16 mile run. Do the first four miles easy. If you're wearing a heart rate monitor, do it between, be running at 130 to 140 heart rate. Then do one mile at like 730, seven minutes and 30 seconds, drop it down. It's a very hard mile, so, and you, and you gotta also remind, that's over, you know, it's about a minute and a half faster than your goal marathon race pace. Or run it, try it anywhere from between 7 minutes and 7.30 pace. Very, very hard, very quali high quality mile. Then do 4 miles at 150 heart rate. And then, so then you recover, you do 4 miles. Then do 5 miles at like 160 heart rate. So again, very, very high quality. Then drop back down, drop your mileage back down, doing like another four or five mile segment, nice and relaxed. Then drop another mile at like seven minutes, seven minutes to 7:30. So, do you see how you're changing up how you're how you're running your your long run? It's it's in very it's varied paces. It's not just one slow long uh, pace for 20 you know 20 to 24 miles. So. You know, I guess the best way to explain it is you know, Sebastian Coe, the 800 meter world record holder, well, used to be the 800 meter world record holder. I think he ran like a, a minute and 41 seconds for uh, 800 meters. I mean, he put it bluntly. He's like, long, slow distance running will produce long, slow runners. So, with you trying to break a four hour marathon and trying to hold that pace for 26.2 miles, you're definitely not average. Uh, there's a very small percentage of people that around the world that can break a four hour marathon. And it, obviously, numbers go even further down uh, the faster you want to run the distance. But that's one of the key things that helped me break two hours and 20 minutes. It's one of the the most important uh, strategies that I that I want to share with you, uh, regardless of where you're at right now, whether you're at four hours and 59 minutes or you're four hours flat and a few few seconds away. Um, if you change up how you're how you're doing that long run, uh, you're gonna definitely crush. The four-hour marathon. You're going to be, you know, and, and the marathon is like that. You, it's not like a 5K. You can't drop it, you know, an hour off a 5K time, but you can drop a, an hour off a marathon. So, uh, just to get, give you a heads up on Run Dream Achieve right now. I'm currently working on a course um, where I'm going to be teaching you how to break the four-hour marathon. It's going to, it's going to be a very, very extensive course, um, and 
it's going to conclude with a 16-week plan where I'm going to give you a day-by-day -day, uh, strategy on how to break this, this this barrier and get under it. I want to see far more marathoners get under the four-hour marathon. Um, you know, I read about a guy who uh, who tried 86 times to break the four-hour marathon and finally did it on his uh, uh, on his last try. So uh, kudos to that guy. But you you really do you have to you have to be very very tenacious. You have to be persistent, consistent with your training. Um, but I can tell you right now from my background and experience too that if you change up how you're doing that, uh, how you're doing your long run, change up each week. Um, don't run easy. Just don't run just easy, long and easy every single weekend. But also don't run hard every weekend uh, and expect to break four hours either. You have to give your body enough time to recover. So run hard. The following week, run relaxed, nice and easy. Give your body enough time to to recover from the previous week's uh, long run. So definitely do that. So number two, and equally as important, is do not uh, sip fluids in a marathon and expect to uh, get under four hours. You have to learn how to drink, actually drink fluid, get enough calories in your body, uh, get enough fluid in your system as well. Um, this is why so many marathon runners, including myself, I did it for years. Uh, it, it wasn't until I started being mentored by a Boston Marathon champion and two of the world's top distance running coaches that they actually saw what was going on. And one of the biggest reasons why I wasn't improving the marathon was I was not taking enough fluid. So my best uh, advice I can give you is practice doing this in training first. So you don't so if any mistakes that you make in training, you make it in training. You don't make it in the race. So if you say you have a um, an 18 to 22 mile long run planned, what at least what I did in training, what I still do is you know I, I'll I'll put out water bottles every three miles, and usually around mile eight to mile 18, I'll put um, like a packet of goo, you know, uh, so you can get that 150, 100 to 150 calories in you as well at those particular points because obviously that's that's a point in the in the marathon where most people start to uh, th that really need that extra boost that energy um, so practice that in training get to a point where you're you're learning how to hold a water bottle while you're running and drinking and not just taking a Dixie cup and taking a few sips out of it and expecting to run 26.2 miles in and under a 909 mile pace. So there are a lot of different things you have to do to get to sustain nine or to sustain four hour marathon pace. Um, remember that's 909 per mile average. That's the average pace. So you also have to remember that a lot of those miles are going to be under under nine minute mile pace. You might be running 840s, 850s, 920s, 930s, but that's the average. So uh, there's a lot of other things that go into breaking a four-hour marathon, but I'm certain that these two things that I've covered here, um, obviously in a video there's there's only so much I can say, but there's a lot more I'm going to be covering in the four-hour marathon course that I'm building right now. So definitely uh, leave a comment below. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, let me know if there's any other pain points that you've had in the marathon, that, uh, especially in regards to breaking four hours. Um, anything that I can that I can cover either in another video or in a post or we can discuss in person over over a, a video conference call. Uh, but definitely uh, keep those two things in mind. Vary up the pace of your long runs. Be patient with it because it does take a lot of patience um, to get fit. Uh, definitely first spend you know four to six weeks running easy mileage before you start any uh, sub four hour marathon training program uh, because once usually these programs are anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks I have actually uh, training plans that I've built specifically on how to break a four-hour marathon on the on the site itself so you're welcome to stop by the shop as well and pick out one of those courses or one of those uh, training plans if you want but uh, again uh, feel free to leave a comment below give me a thumbs up if you like this video and I look forward to making uh, more videos on how to uh, get under this barrier because I know you can do it. It doesn't matter if you're at 459 or you're at four hours flat It's just a few minor changes you need to make in your training and that's really gonna make the difference in the long run What does running a sub four-hour marathon entail? 
This is a question uh, I get asked a lot from either commenters on here on the YouTube channel or from emails that I get. And a lot of athletes are asking me about the the training programs and the running courses that I've created on, on RunDreamAchieve.com. And I can assure you that running a sub four hour marathon is going to take a heavy, a heavy emphasis on training below your goal race pace in order to get a sub four hour marathon to feel more in control. And that's really, you wanna get that race pace to feel less aggressive. Uh, a sub four hour marathon requires you to be able to sustain nine minutes and nine seconds per mile or five minutes and 41 seconds per kilometer for that entire race. And the marathon demands a lot of initiative on, a, on our parts. There's, it's the longest event. It's, it's more of an aerobic event. Uh, it's not as anaerobic as comp compared to uh, the Mao or the 5K or the 10K. Uh, I never, as a, as a marathoner, I really never envisioned myself running the marathon distance. Uh, I ended up running 219.35 for the distance in 2007 at the 2007 California International Marathon. I uh, ended up placing fourth overall and, and finishing as the top American in that race. And that day was probably like qualifying for the Olympic Games for me because I had so many failures along the way in this event and I had to continue to stay focused and you know, not to lose enthusiasm when I had those trials and tribulations. And that's why I want to share this video with you and why it's so important that you uh, Study what the best marathoners are doing. Find out what exactly you need to do differently in order to break a sub four hour marathon. And running a sub four hour marathon can be done. I mean, if you're running, if your personal best right now maybe is 445 or 430, maybe you're at 459, 59 right now. You've just broken five, five hours and you want to get to a point where you can run 359, 59. Don't think of it as something that's going to be impossible because it's not. You, you have to just have, you really have to have a long-term vision, a long-term mindset in terms of to be successful in this event. Uh, your goals right now uh, may take you a few years. It may take you a decade to get to a point where you want to run, uh, to get to a point where you want, to, where you're able to run as fast as you want to run in the marathon distance. Um, when I was training heavily for the marathon, I was all in. There was no interest involved. I was 100% committed, and that's what you have to be. I mean, you still got to have a good time and enjoy yourself, uh, but to break a sub four hour marathon and to get to be able to sustain nine minutes and nine seconds per mile or five minutes and 41 seconds per kilometer over that entire distance, you're going to have to start doing some things differently. And I do teach this in the sub four hour marathon mastery course. That's on RunDreamAchieve.com. It's very intense. Uh, it's a very in-depth course where we we work together uh, via video tutorials. There's a lot of video tutorials that where I cover uh, race pace training, nutrition, mindset, uh, what types of workouts you need to be doing in order to get a sub four hour marathon um, to to achieve a sub four hour marathon. Uh, the it is an investment. It's a small investment, but it's worth worth it in the end. Uh, I've invested in a lot of uh, running courses and business seminars and, and uh, you know, obviously training gear and things over the years myself because I was always focused on getting better and getting to that next level. So if that's something that's interest of interest to you, definitely check out RunDreamAchieve.com. Uh, click on the training programs or you can click on the courses and, and that's where the Sub 4 Hour Marathon course is uh, located. And I'll leave some links below this video as well uh, that'll help you. But I believe for you to get under the four hour marathon barrier, you're gonna to have to start running those long runs faster, okay? You may, you may be, in the past, you maybe have just been running long, slow distance on your, on your weekend long runs. And that's a mistake that I made too. Uh, you can still increase uh, your endurance and definitely improve your fitness by just running long every single weekend. But when it comes to r training for a specific time, especially a time as competitive as a sub four hour marathon, you know, running a sub four hour marathon is going to mean you're going to have to start thinking outside the box. You're going to have to start doing the things that very competitive athletes do to make that that event look easy. And if you've seen, you've been in numerous races yourself, you already know where uh, runners are just taking off and they, they, they feel, it looks like they're just r running with, without effort. Um, you can get to that point, but you have to train very high. You have to train the anaerobic systems of the body and the aerobic systems of the body, especially the anaerobic when it comes to 
being able to sustain that pace over a longer period of time. Uh, it really comes down to how how well you can improve your lactate tolerance. Uh, I definitely encourage you to go run go to RunDreamAchieve.com. Check out the other videos that are here as well on the channel. Uh, I've talked a lot about VO2 max workouts, lactate tolerance workouts, uh, how to improve your hydration. Uh, those are a lot of things that you can do to get to a point where you can run that 359, 59 or faster for the marathon distance. You know, again, it's it's being able to clear lactic acid faster than it's building up. And you have to follow the fundamentals. And the fundamentals are faster long runs spent at a higher percentage of your your maximum heart rate. Uh, I would recommend around 85% uh, running around, depending on your age. Uh, for me, when I ran my best marathon, I was doing my long runs at 160 beats per minute. And when I was very, very fit, I was able to run around 520s to 540s pace per mile uh, during those long runs. And a lot of times I would drop like sub five minute miles, you know, during like a 20 mile long run, I would drop uh, every fourth mile, I would go uh, 450 to four to five flat on the fourth mile, the eighth, 12th, 16th, and 20th mile. And then back right back into 160 heart rate. And then the following week, so I could recover from those hard workouts, I would do a very relaxed, easy, long run the following week. And that's what I recommend on all of my courses, uh, all of the training programs that are on RunDreamAchieve.com. They're all constructed the same way. So you have that sufficient time uh, to, to recover from those really hard long runs and those hard anaerobic efforts that you're doing. That, that piece of advice, I'm telling you, is priceless. It's something that I had to, it took me a lot of years to get right because I was so focused on high mileage, thinking that higher mileage was going to get me a faster marathon time, and which wasn't the case. And I had to slow down on those recovery days. This is a big mistake because we're so driven, so focused as athletes, as marathoners. Uh, we, we want those results and we're so driven that we don't realize how important that time, that, that time to back off on those easy days is. So that's another key piece. If you were, you know, running a sub four hour marathon also involves, you know, being disciplined on those easy days where you allow yourself time at least 48 hours, you know, preferably 48 hours after a hard track session or a hard tempo run uh, to, to give yourself time to recover from those hard workouts so that your body can super compensate. And if you don't know what that is, Google the word super compensation. You'll find out exactly why I'm stressing how important recovery is if you want to become a sub four hour marathon and running a sub four hour marathon is about having that same discipline to slow down on your recovery days and have that same focus and drive as you have on your hard days on your easy days but you know you got to allow yourself time to relax and enjoy yourself allow yourself time to recharge and then get back the next on the next anaerobic workout or track session and really hammer it because that's what the best runners do. I mean, we, you know, I didn't get to a point where I could break a sub 220 marathon by just running hard every single day or running high mileage. You know, I tried that. I got up to 142 miles a week thinking that that was the answer, thinking that, you know, that's what I needed to do to run faster than 219.35. And um, that, that wasn't it either. To be honest with you, I ran my PR for the marathon on between uh, 85 to 90 miles a week. So I tried that 140 plus deal that didn't work. So get beyond thinking that quantity is the key for you to break a four hour marathon. It's not. You gotta focus more on quality, running, allowing yourself time to recover from those hard workouts that you're doing. And then I promise you, you will get the results you're looking for, but you also have to have the, the patience to, to know that what you're trying to do is very competitive. A sub four hour marathon is a very competitive marathon time. It's a highly respected time. Uh, you know, even for me personally, running 219, I think anybody that can go under a four-hour marathon is a highly competitive athlete. Three hours, anything for the marathon, you know, d deserves a lot of respect. And even if you're brand new to the sport and you've run a few marathons and they're not nowhere near close to a sub four, have respect for yourself because it's very important uh, to, to realize a lot of people don't will, will never do what you've already done, and it's a it's a huge accomplishment just to be able to start and finish a marathon successfully. You know, and uh, that's that's really important to keep in mind. So don't lose your enthusiasm. Know that what you're doing is extremely tough. Uh, it's going to require a lot of work on your part. And I can tell you from my own background that, yes, you do have to have the drive. You do have to have the love for what you're doing 
if, if you're just merely interested in, in running a fast marathon time, that you may not be as successful as you as you need to be. You really have to be 100% committed, all in, fully fully focused, 100% white hot, razor sharp focused to get the results you're looking for. Um, I, I didn't get where I was, what I did in the sport by just being merely interested. Uh, you know, I was in a an elite unit in the army at the World, Army World Class Athlete Program, uh, where results were always watched. Everything, every performance that you you did, everything was was scrutinized. So uh, pressure is a good thing. You know, being under pressure is a good thing, but uh, you also got to have maintain your composure and also. Don't lose enthusiasm. Have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Don't be so stressed out if you don't have the workouts. That, if you're not hitting the splits, the kilometer splits or the mile splits in training, or you have a few day, a few bad days, or you have a few bad performances. I had a lot. I had a ton of bad performances in the marathon. Uh, for me personally, in terms of my what I was trying to do, I was trying to break a 2:22 marathon, which comes out to five minutes and 25 seconds per mile. And you know that's a that's a very highly diff, very very competitive race time, and I had a lot of setbacks where I'd run like in the 240s or the 250s. Uh, I ran a couple th marathons over three hours. I had a couple DNFs uh, lot because I kept trying to run way too fast when I wasn't yet prepared to run that fast. So again, the best runners in the world, sub 220 marathoners, sub 210 marathoners, sub 205 marathoners. We all experience the same frustrations, the same headaches, the same roadblocks as you're going to encounter trying to break a four-hour marathon. It's no different. We all experience the same issues. Focus on your hydration. Start practicing uh, drinking more fluids during your long runs. Start paying attention to your nutrition. I I'm left links here on the, on the video for NutritionGeeks.com. It's another huge resource that I've, I've created uh, where I talk a lot about Herbalife. I'm a big believer in that company. It's been around since 1980, one of the top nutrition companies in the world. Uh, highly recommended, so definitely check that out as well. Uh, RunDreamAchieve.com is more focused on training, mindset, um, and, and, and preparation type content, whereas NutritionGeeks.com, I speak mainly on nutrition. So two huge resources for you. Again, I'll leave links below this video for you uh, that you can check out that will help you in, in your quest to get under four hours. Again, those uh, those running courses, the sub four hour marathon mastery course is a huge. Um, it's definitely a course I believe in. It took me some time to create that. Uh, definitely for athletes that are trying to break the four hour marathon and running a sub four hour marathon will not come overnight. Uh, like I said, it's, it's an extremely competitive time. So give yourself time. You know, keep keep putting in those hard workouts. Train your anaerobic system. Allow yourself time to you know get to a point where you can get on the track and you can do six times one mile on the track at around eight flat per mile. Think of how easy nine minutes and nine seconds per mile is going to feel, or five minutes and 41 seconds per kilometer is going to feel if you've trained much, much faster than that pace. And that's critical. Start training longer periods of time running at your anaerobic threshold, the point where we start to build up lactic acid, because that is the point where we race at. So the longer and more, the longer you can train at that effort, the better. And the more efficient, more economical you're going to run over the marathon distance. And I'm telling you from my own background, my own experience, you will ex you will deal with challenges in your preparation for this event. I've been where you're at. I know what it, what I'm talking about. I've been running for 28 years. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of resources on both these sites, RunDreamAchieve.com and NutritionGeeks.com, that that are there for you. Uh, that will help you get to that sub four hour marathon uh, goal that you're looking for. So if you're brand new to the channel, if you've never been here or if you have been here, share this video with as many athletes, many friends and family that you know, coworkers. Um, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, uh, as, you know, as that really supports the channel. If you're if you're just watching this and you don't want to subscribe, just give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Uh, all the support definitely goes to uh, making this channel a better channel. Uh, and definitely, if you have a specific topic you want me to cover in my next in my next video, leave me a comment in the comment section below. Uh, let me know where you're currently at with the marathon. Are you you know are you at 450? 15 445 you know what has caused you the biggest issue trying to break to the four-hour marathon so uh, with that I'll close uh, I hope this uh, video has been helpful for you and learning you know what what are some of the strategies and fundamentals you need to learn in running a sub four-hour marathon so which, so I know and understand how complex the marathon 
uh, is and training for it and being able to um, get more effective and more efficient when you're racing. Uh, I, I don't believe in running long, slow, and easy every single weekend. I think for you to be able to um, get to a point where you handle race pace uh, and, and make it feel more moderate rather than anaerobic, more you know where you're redlining way too early in the race, um, it is very important. You have to get beyond just this idea of running easy every single weekend. Yes, you still need those types of workouts. You still need to do long runs that are relaxed and very easy, but I always alternate and what worked for me at least to go from a 243.36 marathon PR to a two hour 19.35 marathon PR is I started doing very hard long runs. Um, it was a process. It didn't happen overnight. I was coached by Lisa Rainsberger, uh, the 1985 Boston Marathon champion when I was with the U.S. Army World Class Athlete Program. And I had never done this type of long run, uh, you know, these, these very paced long runs that I talk about in practically all of my videos. Um, the reason why I always repeat this is because I need it to, to, I need to get to and through you uh, as as the athlete to make sure that you're paying attention to this factor if you want to run a sub four hour marathon you have to run nine minutes and nine seconds per mile for 26.2 miles or five minutes and 41 seconds per kilometer for 42.2 kilometers so again many athletes can hold sub four hour marathon pace for a half marathon you know but there are far fewer athletes that are able to sustain, sustain four hour marathon uh long run pace for that entire race distance. And what I want and what I, the focus that I have here at rundreamachieve.com and the channel itself is to help you to use leverage to get beyond working harder to get better results. The idea of working hard, I, I've known plenty of athletes over the years that work extremely hard that have never broken a four hour marathon. It's a very, very competitive time. Uh, many athletes around the world are trying to run a sub four hour marathon. And, and so, to get more effective at running four hour marathon long run pace in training is patience. There's, it's not gonna happen overnight. You're not gonna get to a point where you can do a 20 mile long run and do 16 or you know, between 12 and 16 miles of that 20 mile long run you know, at 10 seconds slower than goal sub four hour marathon race pace. You know, it's, it, it's a process you have to uh, allow time, first focusing on aerobic training, where you're just running relaxed, easy mileage, preferably between four and eight weeks before you start a 16 week block of training. You know, um, training for five months for a marathon is plenty of time, you know, getting a minimal of four, out, four weeks of easy, relaxed training, four, to eight, four weeks of easy, relaxed mileage, um, before you start a 16 week block of training uh, will help set you up for success in breaking the four hour marathon. You know, I have a sub four hour marathon course that I built specifically for athletes that are trying to run three hours and 59 minutes, uh, as well as sub four hour marathon training plans on rundreamachieve.com. So definitely check, check out the website, check out the uh, links below all of my videos that has, you know, there are resources there for you. Um, it, it's, you know, when you're thinking about doing your, your long runs, um, you know, over the years too, I would first focus, I was always focused on just running relaxed, easy long runs first, because you're not gonna just build, you know, jump into doing uh, very paced long runs. And what I mean by very paced long runs is examples of types of the workouts I was doing when I was trying to break a, a two hour, 22 minute marathon, um, was I would do say like a 20 miler, and I would do uh, two miles easy, then I would go into 10 miles at 160 beats per minute. You know, I was wearing a heart rate monitor, so I was running right around 88 to 90% of my maximum heart rate. And so I would do two miles easy, between 10 and 12 miles at that effort, then run two miles easy. Then maybe after that two mile easy segment, I would drop a sub five minute mile. And then I would run a couple miles easy, drop another sub five minute mile. So again, and then, Obviously, the last couple miles were nice and easy, relaxed, cool down miles. So again, it's a mixture of, um, and when I mean very paced, it's a mixture of hard, very hard anaerobic running, more toward your anaerobic threshold effort type running, and then jogging, relaxed, easy running during those long runs. So it's a mixture of uh, you know efforts, 
you know, running at paces that are closer to your 5K to 10K effort, running a few miles at marathon goal race pace or at sub four hour marathon goal race pace in this case. Um, and that's kind of um, along with running easy, relaxed running. So you can recover from those harder efforts that you're running during the long run. Uh, other types of workouts I would do is say like a 20 miler where I would drop every fourth mile, I would drop a sub five minute mile right in the middle of those of that 20 miler. And, and the rest of the miles were just easy relax right around, you know, six, between 630 and 730 mile pace. For an athlete that's trying to break, um, you know, more towards sub three hours or sub two hours and 30 minutes, you know, that pace is more toward more of an easy effort, 630 to 730 mile pace. The mistake I was making over the years was I was running from 2002 when I first started mar running marathons. My debut was the 2002 New York City Marathon. I ran 243.36 starting in last place for lung cancer research. Started in 32,189th place, finished in 257th overall. Um, but I was running from 2002, my first marathon, I was running far too many of my long runs just easy and relaxed. Uh, for me, again, it was anywhere from around 6.30 to 7.30 mile, mile pace, but I was trying to run under a two hour and 22 minute marathon. So if you are say a four hour, 30 minute marathoner right now, or maybe you're a sub, sub five hour marathoner trying to get to 3.59, you have to realize you're gonna have to make some big, big changes in your training to get to a point where you're running, um, you know, tw more towards sub, you know, on, uh, over to 11 minute mile per mile pace to 909 mile pace. Major, major changes are gonna be needed. And one of the biggest changes you can make to, to get four hour marathon long run pace or race pace to feel easier is to start implementing these varied pace long runs. This is how the training plans that I have are built. Whether you're training for a 5K and you're trying to break 15 minutes for 5K or you're trying to break a sub four hour marathon. You know, I have training plans from anywhere from the mile all the way up to the marathon. So definitely check out those resources. It's much more helpful to follow a training plan that is specifically built for the athlete trying to run that specific goal race pace. And again, to break a four hour marathon, you have to be thinking strategically. You have to be thinking about leverage. How do I train smarter rather than harder? Do I need to really run more mileage to break a sub four hour marathon? No, you don't. You have to look at the mileage that you are putting in and, and see, am I running too many miles or too many kilometers far too slow? You know, and you also have to look at your easy days. Are you still worried about what pace you're running on your easy days? Get beyond that because your track sessions, your tempo runs, your hill repetitions, those very hard long runs that you're doing, they are gonna tax you physically and mentally. So you have to pay attention to the rest period, you know, to run, to consistently get better at, at, at performing better in training at four hour marathon long run pace. Um, and, and definitely in the race, when you're running at sub four hour marathon pace to get better at that, you have to look at all angles of your training. You know, it's not just about the track workouts, the tempo runs you're doing, it's the rest period, it's the recovery. Are you paying attention to your hydration and training? Are you paying attention to your nutrition before, during, and after your workouts? You know, I have another website called nutritiongeeks.com, so definitely check that website out as well, where I talk more about, you know, nutrition uh, that go into, especially um, your, your recovery phase of your training. So definitely check that out. You have to look at all the angles uh, that, that are gonna go into a great marathon performance. And like I said, very few athletes around the world get to a point where they can run 359 or faster for the marathon. This is an extremely difficult, very competitive time. Uh, you know, even as a, a sub 220 marathoner, I respect athletes that are trying to break this barrier. You know, I, I even, those athletes that are out there trying to break a five hour marathon, I have a course that I built for that as well. Um, so I respect all athletes, regardless if you're a beginner or you're an elite level athlete. Um, I've been around the block. I've been doing this for about 30 years, so I understand what it takes to perform at very high levels. And even if you don't feel like you have a lot of talent, you can make up for it with your work ethic. Yes, it, it's gonna take you longer to achieve what somebody that has a lot more genetic talent, um, you know, somebody that has more genetic talent than you might 
only take a few months to break a four-hour marathon. Maybe they'll break their four hour, the four-hour marathon barrier in their first marathon. Whereas somebody that doesn't have quite as much genetic talent, but does have the work ethic and drive and motivation to succeed, will eventually break the barrier. But it's just going to take them a little longer. So don't get discouraged. You're going to face some trials. You're going to face some challenges in training to break a sub four hour marathon. But the key thing is, is to know and, and study from the athletes that have already done it. You know, invest in yourself, get a training plan. You know, like I said, there's training plans in, and the running course itself that I built. Um, those are huge two resources that are, that are there for you where you already are taught what you need to be doing on a daily, monthly, and you know, weekly basis in, in training. I'm always available as well. You know, you're always welcome to, to leave a comment. Um, I'll either make a video about the question you may have or I will just reach back out to you. But um, I myself as well have, have invested in, in professional coaching as well as, in, as well as professional coach consulting from other world-class athletes, world-class coaches, um, world-class exercise physiologist. I've studied exercise physiology my entire life. So um, this is a, a topic that I'm very passionate about. And I want to make sure that these videos help you and get you thinking in a different mindset uh, in order to break sub four hours for the marathon or, you know, you're going after a specific time in the 5k or the mile or 10k half marathon. It's about repetitive hearing this over and over again um, so that you get to a point where, okay, this is becoming automatic. I'm doing this in training. I'm going to get the results I'm seeking. I'm changing up how I'm doing my training. I'm getting beyond just thinking I need to run more mileage. You're starting to focus on what the best middle to long distance runners focus on, how they think, how they train. So I hope this video in terms of getting you to um, think more strategically in, in how you're doing your long runs, how you're setting those long runs up, what you're doing in terms of your um, off, the, off the roads and off the track. Pay attention to your hydration before, during, and after these, your long runs. Get plenty of sleep. Do not neglect this. Again, if you want to be good, you can just do, you can, and, and you know, you can get by uh, on minimal sleep. But if you want to be great, if you want to be exceptional at what you're doing in terms of the marathon or, or any middle distance race or your training, you have to do what great athletes do. And that is zeroing in on training at near and far below goal sub four hour marathon race pace. Train much faster than this pace so that you get it to feel more moderate. So spend some time training down under seven minute mile pace. Spend some time training down under seven minute per kilometer pace. Think of how easy goal marathon race pace is gonna feel. How easy is 10, uh, 909 per mile pace or 541 per kilometer pace gonna feel then? You know, not, you know, training much, much faster, training well under, um, four minute kilometer pace. Again, that's gonna make 541 kilometer pace feel much easier. It's easier said than done, I understand, but think long term and be patient with yourself. The training plans that I have are built, are 16 weeks in training, are 16 week blocks of training. Every third week at the end of third week is a recovery week. So we're again, focusing on the rest period, all of the hard work you do today the re and again, always remember too, it takes about three weeks for the, the body to adapt to any stress load that you're placing on it. So the workouts you do today, the benefits of the workouts you do today are going to be seen weeks from now. And, you know, I go into real specifics on the proper methods, the proper training uh, fundamentals that you really need to follow in order to be able to perform at a higher level in the marathon distance. And believe me when I say this, uh, what I'm teaching in uh, the running courses on RunDreamAchieve.com, the the training programs that I've created, all the content here on the running here on this uh, YouTube channel, and on the website at RunDreamAchieve.com, I have about uh, close to 700 posts now on on that website I've had since 2011, and I continually harp on um, the the importance of recovery and a sub four hour marathon training plan really has to encompass not only training at speeds at your race pace that you're trying to hold for the sub four hour marathon, which is, uh, it comes out to nine minutes and nine seconds per mile or five minutes and 41 seconds per kilometer. 
and really the key to being able to be a successful marathon runner regardless if you're a five hour marathoner you're 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 under three hours or you're trying to break the four hour marathon in your case you need to continue to stress the anaerobic systems of the body and doing it on a consistent persistent basis you cannot be lukewarm and expect to get great results as a marathon runner you know you're going after a very competitive time anything really under four hours you really have got to be aerobically fit and you also have to have a combination of being very strong with your stamina wise and your strength because racing a marathon and running a marathon are two different things and you, you really have to uh, focus on the principles of success and what those are in the in the marathon distance are training sufficiently at a higher heart rate for longer periods of time coupled with recovery and allowing yourself time to back off on those days that you really have got to slow down and back off and allow your time your body time to adapt to all those really hard anaerobic workouts you're doing you know over the years i experienced the same frustrations you you've had to deal with too you know i've i've dnf'd in in marathons i've had about three marathons where i dnf sucked if you're going after specific times for the marathon distance you also have to expect that you will have challenges. You know, I did not just get to a point to that I could just immediately run a 219 marathon. You know, it took me from 2002 all the way to 2007 to break the 220 marathon barrier. And along the the, the path to breaking the 220 barrier, you know, I had run 250s, I'd run 240s, I'd run 230s several times, like 232, 236, several times. In uh, you know, and I had disappointments too. You know, I ran over three hours a couple times because I was running way too fast the first 15 miles of the race, running closer to uh, 215 marathon pace, going at paces that were just too aggressive for me, and I had not prepared to run that fast. So if you're gonna attack a sub four hour marathon, be prepared first and foremost to challenge yourself in as much as you possibly can in training first. Make your mistakes in training. Don't get to the race and then realize that, man, I didn't do my homework and training first, and I'm not prepared to run this fast in the marathon. So a lot of what I teach in my running courses, in the running, in the training programs that I've created, and all the content that you see on RunDreamAchieve.com and in the videos here, I really talk a lot about uh, not just the successes, because um, everybody likes to talk about their success and how they ran this and how they did this and what, what place they were in, you know, in this particular race. Not too many people really want to talk about their failures. And I think it's very important that I also share with you as you're, you know, you're preparing your sub four hour marathon training plan. Um, I've, that's why I created the, the sub four hour marathon training plans that I have on RunDreamAchieve.com because I want the athletes that are following my advice to get to a point where they're working smarter and they're getting better results by training less. You don't necessarily have to train harder and run higher mileage to get better results. We've all been taught how to work smart or work hard. We've all been taught how to work hard. And yet, oftentimes the hardest working athletes don't always get the results they're shooting for. Um, I've been there too. I've, I've got up to 142 miles a week thinking that that was the answer to, to running a faster marathon. And yet I ran a personal best for the marathon distance running 85 to 90 miles a week. So higher mileage isn't isn't the be all end all for running a, a, a great marathon time. Uh, one of my subscribers left me a comment on one of my videos and, and it, was, it was just a perfect example that you don't always have to be pushing hard all, this, all the time and pushing anaerobic workouts all the time to get great results. This guy dropped from a 345 marathon down to a 307 marathon by running basically easy miles for the majority of his mileage. So breaking a sub four hour marathon isn't just about you running at 652 mile pace. You need to spend some time running around 745 to eight minute mile pace. You need to spend some time running around nine minute mile pace where you're just jogging it, where it's gonna feel much, uh, much easier, where you're out on your recovery days and you're allowing your body time to bounce back from the hard track sessions where you're out there doing, you're out there doing those mile repeats at like six minute mile pace or you're doing repeat Ks on the track at like, 345 mile pace or 345 k pace which is way faster than marathon race pace a sub four hour marathon race pace so 
allowing yourself time to not only train hard and pushing your anaerobic systems of your body, where you're running at heart rates, you're training at your anaerobic threshold at uh, closer to around 90% of your maximum heart rate, and you're doing your VO2 max workouts where you're on the track doing repeat 600s, repeat 200s, repeat 300s, where your heart rate's maxed out. You know, you're, you're at, you know, depending on your age, if you're younger, it's gonna be closer to 200 beats a minute. If you're older, like my age, around in your early 40s, might be like 170 might be your max heart rate or 165 might be your heart, max heart rate. Pushing your body like that uh, takes a lot out of the body. You know, you're, you're, in terms of your physiology, you're, you're having micro tears in your muscle fibers. If you're continuing to push hard and every single day and not backing off and not allowing yourself time to recover and not jogging on your recovery days, then you're not going to get the physiological adaptations you're looking for as quickly and as efficiently as you would want, or as you would get if you were backing off, training like the best athletes train. And I can tell you from a lot of the experiences that I've had over the years, training with sub four minute milers, uh, sub 102 half athletes, uh, sub 210 marathoners, sub 211, sub 212 marathon types. Uh, training with these athletes taught me a lot. And a lot of them were from Europe, some were from America, some for, were from Ethiopia and Kenya. They would jog on their easy days. I mean, these are guys uh, that could break sub, sub five minute mile pace. I've trained with females that could run under 235 for the marathon that would literally jog on their recovery days. So if these athletes can train at such a slow pace on their recovery days, I think it's really important to keep that in mind, you know, and I've incorporated that into the Run Dream Achieve sub four hour marathon training plan uh, tools that I have on the, on the RunDreamAchieve.com website. So I'll leave links below this video uh, with some important, some, some resources that you can take away from this video um, and definitely continue to focus on the fundamentals. What are you doing in your off hours? Are you staying up late? Are you, are you not paying attention to the amount of fluid you're taking in after your workouts? If you, if you go out and you do a, a 16 kilometer or 25 K long run, or, you know, a 20 to 22 mile hard, harder, long pace, long run, and you're not paying attention to your hydration after you're done, even while you're doing the training, you know, you can have all the motivation in the world. And it's going to be really difficult to get the results that you're looking for. You know, a sub four marathon, like I said, is that's a highly aggressive time. Anything 359, 59 or faster is you're, you're getting into um, an area of performance that a lot of marathoners around the world would absolutely love to be able to say that they've been able to do. So really take your your preparation uh, seriously. Also pay attention to still having a good time, allowing allowing yourself time to enjoy uh, the experience of training for middle to long distance events. And, you know, running, there's more to life than running. So if you have a bad performance or if you have a bad race, just take away from it. What did, what did you learn from it? What, you know, the fact that, okay, I'm healthy. I can still get out the door. I can still move. I'm not injured. I can still prepare. Yeah, it was a bad workout. I learned this. I learned what I needed to adjust in my training. Uh, and, and now I'm going to invest in a sub four hour marathon training plan uh, that somebody that's run a, a 219 marathoner on has created. And I'm gonna learn from what some of the world's top distance runners uh, that taught Nate what he needed to do in order to run faster. I'm gonna invest in myself and I'm going to uh, go all in. I'm 100% committed. I'm gonna give it my very best. And I'm gonna learn some different strategies that perhaps are, I've, that perhaps are taught in this sub four hour marathon training plan that maybe I, I that weren't taught in other training plans that I've uh, invested in in the past. So again, I, I know what you're dealing with. I know the frustrations and I know uh, the importance of not losing enthusiasm for what you're doing and continuing to stay focused and immersed and, and you know, have those blinders on where you're 100% committed. You're not just merely interested in, in running a sub four hour marathon uh, or, or whatever distance you're going for, whatever time frame you're going after, whether it's a 5K in under 25 minutes or a half marathon under two hours, um, you know, a 10K under 40 minutes, whatever it is you're going after, 
You need to continue to visually see yourself doing it before it becomes a reality. I cannot stress enough how important the subconscious mind is in visualizing yourself doing something before it's done. You know, I've, I continue to remind viewers here on the channel and on RunDreamAchieve.com that I continually saw myself breaking 222 for the marathon when I was still a 243 marathoner. I knew I'd, you know, I'd run 51 minutes for 10 miles, but I just hadn't mastered the marathon distance yet. I ran a 243.36, then I, I set a, a, a small PR running a 240.02 at the 2007 Grandma's Marathon, where I went out in 110 going through the half marathon point, 110.31, which was a half marathon personal best at, at that time, and just absolutely crashed in the last uh, eight miles of that race. Uh, I still remember I was still on 227 marathon pace through the 20 mile point and really just you know, really had to learn and take my licks in, in that marathon performance. It was a small PR, a few minutes, uh, but it took several attempts until I eventually got it right and then started to learn what I was doing wrong in training that taught me where I needed to go until I eventually broke the 220 marathon barrier. So that's a big chunk of time to go from 243, 240.02 down to under 220. And did I get in the 230s? Yes, I had to experience a 236. I had to experience what type of pace that dealt, what that felt like. And I was always going for under 222. So I was always pushing the, that, that barrier of going through the half and under 111. So I had to get to a point where eventually I was strong enough, I had the strength and the stamina to get to a point where I could break 222. And the same with you. You gotta experience your, you gotta experience those those tests to see how strong you are mentally, how physically prepared you are. And I know if you follow the, the fundamentals that are in the courses that I teach and the training programs, you're gonna get the results you're looking for because you're training smarter. You're not focusing on quantity, so much quantity, you're training on quality. And you can still run higher volume, but you gotta focus on these fundamentals.